The movie starts in Italy, where a woman walks through a courtyard filled with lifeless bodies of mafia members after a violent shootout. A woman named Bianca kisses the forehead of her boss, Don Balbano, declaring war between mafia families. Soon after, she calls a middle-aged mother named Kristen. However, Kristen is busy with preparations that bring her to tears for her child, Nikki's, departure to college, and ignores the call. Kristen is a typical suburban housewife married to Paul, a band member. Although her life seems ordinary, Kristen faces challenges at her job in pharmaceutical marketing, where male colleagues consistently belittle her efforts with misogynistic comments. One day, after coming home from work, Kristen finally answered a call from Bianca. She refused an invitation to fly to Rome for her grandfather, Don Balbano's, funeral, saying she had work responsibilities and commitments to her husband Paul. When she went to the basement to ask Paul to turn down the music, she was shocked to find him cheating with their child's guidance counselor. Feeling devastated by the betrayal, Kristen attended a self-defense class with her best friend Jenny, an international lawyer. Kristen shared her decision to divorce Paul and an exciting offer from Bianca. Jenny urged Kristen to put herself first for once and convinced her to accept the invitation to Italy. Hesitantly, Kristen agreed because Italy was also her dream vacation destination and she wanted to enjoy handsome Italian men while leaving behind the sorrow of her failed marriage. Upon arriving in Rome, Kristen met a charming Italian man named Lorenzo. Their brief encounter was interrupted by Lorenzo's aunt Esmeralda, who urged him to hurry. Kristen and Lorenzo exchanged numbers with the promise of a message from him later. Not long after, two men named Dante and Aldo came to pick up Kristen. Unbeknownst to her, they were mafia bodyguards. In a rush to attend Don Balbano's funeral, the bodyguards sped past famous tourist attractions in Rome. Kristen, who was busy changing clothes for the funeral, hardly noticed the scenery along the way. They finally arrived at a church near Rome just in time for Don Balbano's funeral. Kristen finally met Bianca, who introduced her to Don Balbano's great-grandson, Fabrizio Balbano. Fabrizio seemed to be a somewhat unpredictable character. The funeral was followed by a procession carrying Don Balbano's coffin through the streets of the small town. When asked by Kristen, Bianca explained that Don Balbano was a winemaker. Suddenly chaos erupted as shots were fired around the coffin and those carrying it, a shootout broke out between the Balbano family and their rivals, the Romano family. Dante, one of Kristen's bodyguards, skillfully caused two Romano motorcyclists to fall. The relentless Romano hitman, now pursuing the Balbanos on foot, continued their chase. Kristen struggled but stayed with the family as they safely returned to the car and escaped. Upon arriving at the Balano mansion, Kristen demands an explanation. Bianca reveals that the Romano family killed her grandfather during a meeting between the two families, where Don Romano was also killed. Bianca shows a video from her grandfather revealing that the Romanos were responsible for her father's unnatural death before her mother took her to America. In a shocking twist, Grandfather Balbano reveals his last wish. Kristen must step forward as the new head of the Balano family with Bianca at her right hand. Fabrizio, who is ambitious to be the boss, does not take this well. However, Kristen wants to return to her normal life at home after enjoying a dream vacation in Italy. She receives a call from Lorenzo but Dante smashes her phone, reminding her that, as a boss, she should not be talking to strangers. Kristen is determined to leave the Balbano house but Bianca intervenes, pointing out that she is in a foreign land without a working phone and is currently at risk of becoming a target of the Romano family. To find a middle ground, Bianca suggests easing tensions by inviting Kristen to make wine as a sign of trust. She provides Kristen with a new secure phone to contact Lorenzo. However, there's one condition, Kristen must agree to attend a meeting with the Romano family's new Don. Bianca hopes Kristen can extend an olive branch by proposing a territorial deal to Don Romano to restore peace between the feuding families. Reluctantly, Kristen agrees and undergoes a makeover with Bianca's help, now looking the part of a mafia donna. Escorted by Dante and Aldo, Kristen arrives at the restaurant where the meeting will be held. She kindly greets the female waiter before sitting opposite the new Don Romano, Carlo, a charming and captivating figure, immediately draws Kristen's attention. Although Kristen offers part of the Balbano land, Carlo seems uninterested. As drinks flow, Kristen gets quite drunk, Carlo takes the opportunity to charm her further, and the meeting turns romantic under somewhat hazy circumstances. Kristen agreed to join Carlo for more drinks in his hotel room, implying things might get intimate. Both headed to Carlo's room with their bodyguards. Each guard checked for hidden weapons, and after being cleared, they were ordered to wait outside the bedroom door while the couple got busy. Just before things got too intimate, Kristen quickly made an excuse to go to the bathroom. Seizing the moment, Carlo revealed a bottle of poison he had hidden and quietly poured it into Kristen's drink. Kristen eventually came back, sipped the poison drink, and continued interacting with Carlo, who hinted cruelly that she would soon die from the poison. However, it turned out to be Carlo who was dying because Kristen had switched their drinks when she had called her guard. He started to panic because he didn't intend to kill Carlo, but he died nonetheless. A fight broke out between the guards, but Aldo and Dante emerged as the winners. After the incident, Kristen was allowed to refresh herself while Dante and Aldo took care of disposing of the body, along with Lorenzo and Bianca, who arrived shortly after. As a warning, they sent Carlos's hand back to the Romano family, a message received by Carlos's cousin, Mamon, who became the new Don Romano. 
holding the title of the new Don Romano, Mammon ordered a hitman named Bruno to take care of the new Donna Bellano. Meanwhile, tensions rose in the Bellano family villa as Fabrizio clashed with Bianca over escalating the conflict with the Romano. Fabrizio's hot temper flared, and he expressed his frustration with Kristen's lack of understanding of the mafia mentality. Still unaware of the Balbano family's illegal activities, Kristen received a crash course on all their illegal businesses. Innocently, Kristen asked about the absence of any legal business they did, apart from the front of the wine factory that produced very poor quality wine. Hearing this, Fabrizio stormed out of the room in anger. Feeling the pressure, Kristen decided it was time to visit Lorenzo. Kristen arrived at Lorenzo's house with her two bodyguards pretending to be her cousins. Lorenzo seemed quite excited, with his aunt Esmeralda also joining in for the family date. He showed off his newly developed pasta line and they all enjoyed it together for dinner. As the night went on, the atmosphere between Kristen and Lorenzo became more intimate, hinting at a potential kiss. A working alarm on Kristen's phone suddenly interrupted their intimate moment, reminding her of an urgent Zoom meeting. She quickly left and went back home with her bodyguards. Upon arriving home, Alda told her that his mother was struggling because her medications had run out and they didn't have the money to buy more. Kristen instructed her two guards to focus on caring for Aldo's mother that night instead of protecting her. Unaware of Bruno lurking in the villa, Kristen started preparing for her Zoom meeting. Bruno, armed with a silenced pistol and a laser sight, sneaked up on her during the meeting. Kristen's boss and colleagues turned off her presentation, showing their indifference to her opinion. Little did they know Kristen was in a dangerous situation as Bruno launched his attack. Instead of shooting her and leaving, Bruno seemed interested in attacking Donna and knew. He dragged her to the sofa, intending to assault her. Quickly Kristen used the self-defense techniques she had learned in class. She took off her high-heeled shoe and fought back, eventually stabbing Bruno in the eye until he died. After the horrific event, Kristen went back to her Zoom meeting, but her colleagues, noticing her shaken demeanor, mistakenly thought she was drunk. Seizing the moment, her boss decided to fire her. Unfazed by the situation, Kristen cleaned herself up and returned to Lorenzo's place, eventually becoming intimate after three years. The next day, Dante and Aldo found Kristen and took her home praising her impressive self-defense from the night before. Bianca informed her about an upcoming meeting with the Romanos. Kristen met with Mammon and his people, who were impressed with her ability to eliminate their boss and their best hitman. Romanos agreed to accept the original territory offer from the Balbanos, and a truce was once again established between the two families. Kristen earned respect from the men at the meeting. Later, Kristen found herself alone in Bellano Park when Fabrizio approached her. He expressed his admiration for her bravery, linking it to the Bellano blood running through her veins. As a sign of acceptance, Fabrizio gave her one of the family rings, officially welcoming Kristen as one of them. After an unusual encounter with Fabrizio, Bianca approached Kristen. She knew Kristen was truly kind, which made her hesitate to become Donna Balbano. However, she opened up about her grandfather's kindness to her family, highlighting how he provided her with a high-tech prosthetic leg to protect her from bullying in her youth. Confident in Kristen's potential for goodness and moral integrity, Bianca believed she could be a mafia donna like no other. Inspired by this conversation, Kristen discovered a new business opportunity. She decided to dive into smuggling and selling American drugs to less fortunate families. As she gradually established this new business, Kristen also dedicated herself to improving the quality of the Balanos vineyard. Balancing both ventures, she aimed to bring a unique mix of compassion and innovation to her role as Donna Balbano. Life as Donna in Italy seemed to grow on Kristen, and she found genuine pleasure in her work. Her romantic relationship with Lorenzo flourished, and the couple appeared deeply in love. One day, while walking along a canal, Lorenzo hinted that Kristen was still quite secretive even though they had been in a relationship for a while. He wanted to visit her home, but Kristen hesitated, not wanting to reveal her family's mafia connections. Suddenly, Aldo and Dante stopped a man trying to disturb them, who turned out to be Paul. He came looking for Kristen, surprising her with his sudden appearance. Learning that Kristen was still technically married, Lorenzo left disappointed while Aldo and Dante escorted Paul back to Villa Bellano. Kristen arrived home to confront her irresponsible husband Paul in front of the other Bellano family members. It became clear that Paul was only looking for her after running out of money. Kristen's initial gentle approach encouraged the others to push her to take a stand and stop caring about this disrespectful man. She eventually ordered Paul to be escorted back to the airport to find his way home without her help. With the success of the drug smuggling business in Vineyard, Kristen confided in Bianca about her desire to leave the mafia life and pursue a normal future with Lorenzo. Bianca acknowledged Kristen's choice, expressing hope that it was truly what Kristen wanted for herself, not a way to please another man in her life. Feeling confident in her decision, Kristen officially announced her retirement at the next meeting between the mafia families. Kristen and Fabrizio joined Romanos and others for their final meeting. Romanos expressed concerns about Kristen's control over the port inspectors in her medical business, demanding a share of her operations. To everyone's surprise, Kristen shocked the room by announcing her resignation and appointing Bianca as her successor. This unexpected move disappointed Fabrizio, who had hoped to be named the new Don Bellano. Romanos became suspicious of Kristen's actions, leading to a tense confrontation.
Suddenly, their meeting was raided by a police team, including Lorenzo and Esmeralda, who turned out to be undercover officers. An intense shootout occurred, and Lorenzo took cover with Kristen. Kristen was shocked, believing their relationship was a lie from the start. Lorenzo did not deny it, adding to Kristen's sorrow. The shootout ended with the police victorious. Kristen was upset with Lorenzo and tried to leave suddenly, but he stopped her. Later, Kristen was in court, represented by a seemingly inexperienced state-appointed lawyer. To her surprise, Jenny appeared to support her best friend and helped win the case. Kristen faced charges of involvement in the mafia, but her good reputation and positive contributions to the community ultimately convinced the judge to clear her of the charges. Everyone was celebrating his victory, and at the courthouse door, Lorenzo approached her. He confessed that he had developed feelings for her during their fake relationship. However, Kristen, no longer the desperate romantic she once was, broke up with Lorenzo and left the courthouse, leaving their relationship behind. After returning home, Kristen was devastated to find Dante wounded from a gunshot. Bianca sent a text to Kristen, revealing she had also been shot, prompting Kristen to rush to the winery to help her. Dante gave her a gun for protection, and Kristen hurried to the winery, only to find Fabrizio holding Paul and Nikki hostage. Fabrizio confessed to killing Bianca in his attempt to become the new Don Bellano. When Fabrizio aimed his gun at Kristen's child, she acted quickly, engaged in a fight, and managed to kick Fabrizio in the groin. Bianca arrived and surprised everyone by revealing she survived because Fabrizio shot her prosthetic leg. In an attempt to escape, Fabrizio fired at them and managed to flee, leaving Kristen to order Bianca to keep Nikki safe. Kristen desperately searches for Fabrizio, finally finding him on a platform above the wine factory machinery. She threatens him with a gun, forcing Kristen to act quickly. She turns a knob releasing hot steam that makes Fabrizio attack her. As a rusty fence breaks, Fabrizio almost falls into a wine grinder. Kristen grabs his hand but after some thought, decides to let Fabrizio fall to his death. Initially panicking as usual, Kristen eventually calmed down and left. Kristen decides to stay in Italy and take over the family business in the big house. In prison, Mammon and his friends receive a gift from Kristen that includes a threatening note and a bottle of wine containing Fabrizio's finger. As Nikki and Paul leave for America, Nikki sees people coming to honor her mother by kissing her ring. Kristen's new power does not change her role as a caring and loving mother. She even prepares a mix of nuts for her children's journey home. The closing scene highlights Kristen's ability to balance her responsibilities as a mafia donna with her enduring role as a dedicated mother.